In this third presentation in my sampling distribution series, I'm going to show some working problems on the sampling distribution of the sample mean x bar. However, before we get started, here's what we already know about how to calculate probabilities associated with a random uh, normal variable x, such as earnings per share of firms. So let's say the population mean is $2 and population standard deviation is 2.49. And suppose we consider a firm at random and we wish to determine the probability that the firm's earnings per share would be more than $1.5. So as we learn, the first thing to do is to draw the normal curve and show the relevant regions, which is what I've done here. So with the, with the population mean of 2 right here, and we're looking for probability that x is greater than 1.5. Well, 1.5 is, is a value to the left of the mean of 2. So it's going to be somewhere around there. And so this is the region we shade, which is inclusive of this half equaling 1.5. So all we got to do is figure out what this area is and add it to 1.5. To do so, step two, we calculate the z-value and find the corresponding probability. For the random variable x, this is the definition of z. We substitute and solve and that comes out to be 0.2. And then we're going to go to the z-table and look up the probability corresponding to it. Here we go. Z-table is right here. This is, uh, go up here, this is 0.2, and this is the probability value right there. And that's what you see right here, 0 0.079, added to 0 0.5, and voila. However, if you wish to, kill, to find probabilities associated with not with the random variable x, but rather with the sample mean, with the average earnings per share, that is, as opposed to earnings per share of a particular firm. Well, to explain how that works, here's a mini case. You can pause this uh, video and read it. However, the key things out of this are in red. The population itself is skewed to the left. It has a mean of 2, standard deviation of 0.5. You take a sample of 120 and you find the average sample to be the, av the, a the average of the sample to be 1.8. By the way, this is with respect respect, excuse me, to the tensile strength of uh, metal. And you find also that 18 out of this sample are of substandard. But anyhow, a couple of helpful uh, pointers going forward. The variable here, of course, is tensile strength. The parameters that we're going to be looking at would be the population mean and the population standard deviation. Remember, parameters are the measures or, or descriptors of a population. The variables that we're going to be looking at here is not only the tensile strength variable, which it is a variable because it can be any value, but in particular the estimators, the sample mean and the sample proportion bearing in mind that the sample mean is the estimator for the population mean while the sample proportion p hat is the estimator for the population proportion. The specific estimates we have in this study though include the sample mean of 1.8 which as you can see here it's given and the sample proportion would be 18 out of 120 which you can see here comes out to be 0.5. Now, how is the population distributed? It's skewed to the left, so for sure it's not normal. Nevertheless, the sampling distribution of the sample mean is normal. Why? Because by appeal to the central limit theorem, for irrespective of the fact that the population is skewed, for large samples, the distribution of the sample mean will be normal. And in this example, we have a sample size of 120, so that's pretty decent. The mean of the, of the sampling distribution of x-bars we learned in the previous presentation is the population mean. And the standard deviation, which is also called standard error of the sampling distribution of x-bar, comes out to be this value right here. And it is so defined. The ratio of the population standard deviation and the square roots of the sample size. What if we wish to find the probability? that the sample mean tensile strength is below 1.9. What would that come out to be? If you want to do a manual calculation, which would warrant your use of the z-table, well, you're going to have to define your z. And again, remember, the random variable here is going to be x-bar, which is 
and the sample and the uh, standard deviation here is the standard error of x bar which we've already pointed out uh, before and so this comes out to be 2.19 all we got to do is go to the Z table and find the probability. And if we do so, 2.19 right here. Let's scroll down 2.19. This is 2.1. Catch it across. That's 2.19 right there. The probability value is 0.4857. All right. So that's what you see right here. But bear in mind that this probability value corresponds to this difference here. The difference between the value of the population mean and the value of x bar. And so it is actually this space right here, this area right here. If you want to find this, take it away from 0.5 and you're left with 0 0.014. Now, much easier to do this using Excel. And this is the Excel function right here. And let's do that. So let's go here to Excel. So that's our input and when we come here that's your that, this is your cheat sheet right there so I hit equal and the function is norm dist before I'm done typing it Excel pulls it up just double click it and for X again remember our variable here is gonna be X bar so click on it comma for a mean look at your cheat sheet here is a population mean of 2 comma for standard deviation be careful now it's gonna be the standard error of X bar which is this guy right here it's not gonna be this All right, and then comma and for cumulative you wanna choose true which gives you cumulative probability so double click it and it registers you can also type it in if you want to and hit enter and that's your result right there and that's precisely what you have right here so that's it. And that calculates the uh, when you use that cumulative, it gives you the probability up to the value of x bar of 1.9. So that's this, this area right here. So importantly, we sure can perform reliable studies using random samples drawn from any population. It doesn't matter how the population is shaped, normal or non-normal. All we got to do is make sure that we use large samples because the sampling distribution of x bar will be sure to be approximately normal. And so I note here that this central limit theorem which allows us to do this would therefore enable us to make valid and reliable inference about the population mean and as you're about to find out shortly also the population proportion without actually knowing the shape of the underlying population and in my opinion this is so cool. <laughs> All right, hope you enjoyed that.